Well, today is a milestone in the nursery here. It's the first day of the season, a little bright looking up at the sun like this, that I'm digging trees out of these air pruning beds, getting them ready to go into storage, distribution, planting, all the things that happen in the off season, fall and winter here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I'll probably go into more depth about all of this stuff throughout the season. I've got plenty of beds here that we can talk about this with. Today, I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. You always have to be present and you, you can't rush this. So I'm not rushing, but I am on a little bit of a time crunch. There's a lot of things demanding my attention today. So I can't make a super long video on it. But since it's such a milestone, the first bed that's coming apart, I'm just excited to make a video on it. It's also a milestone in a little bit of another way. You know, today I got my, my inspection, my nursery inspection for the first time in the state of Virginia. I had had an inspection when I got licensed in North Carolina in previous years, so it's not my first time getting inspected, but it's a milestone, you know, being officially established in a new state, you know, it feels good. For those who are not, who are not familiar with uh, the, the licensing process for a nursery, it's very straightforward. Every state's a little bit different, but you basically just have to reach out to your state agriculture department. They have a form you'll fill out, you pay an annual fee, 75, 100 bucks, something like that, and then some sort of plant specialist comes out to the nursery once a year to inspect. Um, they're not out to get you, you know, they're really out to help you. They're just coming to make sure that there's no egregious pest issues in the nursery. And especially if you're doing stuff in air pruning beds, growing from seed on a very small scale, they t I've never had any issues. It's, it's a, you know, like I said, they're really here to help you. They're not here to hurt you. They just want to make you aware of what regulations apply and help you navigate whatever challenges you may be having. So that happened for me today. It was a pretty brief process, you know, 20, 30 minutes. They came and checked out the nursery. They were excited to see a lot of the stuff going on here. It was positive for me to hear. Um, they're seeing a lot more backyard nursery set up with air printing beds, which is what I want. You know, I, I want to see this type, this movement grow and more of these little, you know, small community scale nurseries popping up and distributing trees all over the place. We've got a lot of places we could fill with native plants. And so more of this is what we need. But anyway, I'm pulling some walnuts out today. Uh, I've made videos on this in the past. If you're itching for more detail right now, like I said, I'll, I'll talk about it more in upcoming videos. But I basically just, I removed the top frame, which you can see laying on the ground right there, and the cage, obviously. I scraped some of the soil into this pot. I like to save the soil. I'll either put it back on the bed or I'll use it, you know, in the garden or something. This is still, there's still a lot of compost, organic matter, you can see worms, wood chips, fungi, other insects, sand, silts, clay. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. You know, the, the roots have been just pumping exudates and feeding the biology all season. This is really good stuff. So I don't want to let it go to waste. I don't want to let it fall on the ground here because this is all plastic. If I was in a situation where this was, you know, grass, exposed earth, I could let some of it go back to the earth. Anyway, um, look at this fungal growth in here so what i want to show i've talked about this all of this before and i'll again i'll talk about it all again grading of the trees so first of all i'm just getting the trees out as gently as i can maybe i should back up a second and say once i scrape some some of the soil off the edge i go in with this flat shovel i go in straight down on the edge until i hit the bottom and then i tilt up and just gently do this a little bit then i'll come in do it here a little bit and then I just gently tease apart the soil from the roots. I don't want to pull the trees if there's resistance. If I try to give this a gentle tug and it's, it's resisting, I want to go all the way down until I can feel the bottom of that root and be very gently wiggling it around, trying to tease it upwards and outwards. Once it's really loose, there are times when you can grab them like this and pluck them out like carrots, uh, but you just, you don't want to do that if there's resistance, you can snap the taproot and then immediately I get them dunked into water and what I what I've been excited that you know partly why I wanted to make this video was I just was excited to talk about grading out the trees here so you can see the whole spectrum of trees we have this is on the very small end whether this tree just wasn't vigorous whether it sprouted late and there was a lot of shade who knows but this is a smaller tree that in my opinion, um, this tree would either need to go, as far as black walnuts go, this would be large for some other species, but as far as black walnuts go, this is on the small end for a one-year-old seedling. I'd want to either grow it out another season, or I would be very comfortable donating this or planting it myself. I think this would do fine being planted. But if I was going to sell it, I'd want to sell it at a very different discounted rate 
you know, compared to this is the standard size of black walnut that I'm trying to distribute. You know, the root is about as thick as my finger. You can see the stem is thicker and longer. And then out of each bed, I'll get a couple monsters. Look how much bigger this taproot is. This is just, you know, if I was doing selection, check out this spider coming at me. You see that guy? It's not really focusing well, but he's coming at me, guys. Gotta let him back down on the ground. Um, <clears throat> I really like spiders. You can see just how massive this tree is. You know, if I was trying to do a selection and trying to say, okay, I want to select the most vigorous trees, I would select these out. I could plant them in the landscape. Anyway, I don't know exactly what the fate of this one will be. I, I don't really have a ton of capacity or as much capacity to plant trees in the landscape this year as I have in previous years. I've got the space still in North Carolina, but I'm just, as you have seen in other videos, I'm not there to take care of that space as much. So I'm a little bit more reluctant to go planting my best trees out down there since I just can't care for them the way that I like. And here we have plenty of space to plant trees, but we haven't really prepared any ground or developed any plants. So we, I will be planting here in Virginia this year. I will be planting in North Carolina, but not as much, not in the same quantities probably as the past years in North Carolina. So that tree may get distributed. It may get planted here. I don't know. But point being, there's fun things you can do with selection uh, when you pull these trees out of the beds. You can you can really see when you can see the root systems which trees are more vigorous or less vigorous. And I try to be really clear when I'm listing trees through the nursery. I try to let people know what size they can expect the trees to be. So if the trees are smaller or bigger, I like to say, even if I'm just going to distribute them, if I'm not going to plant them for myself, I like to make it clear to folks ahead of time what they're getting so that you can know and have an expectation. I don't know if you guys can see though, the sun's coming out. It is getting a little bit warmer. You know, typically I would wait to do this until it's colder out, partially because it's pleasant for me. This is another thing I wanted to talk about. I've got white oak seeds that are germinating right now. White oak seeds germinate almost immediately after falling off the tree. I've got to get them into a place where they can grow. The black walnuts go dormant pretty early. They're not fully dormant yet. They've still got a handful of leaves, but it's okay at this stage to start digging them up and doing this sort of work as long as you keep them hydrated. And I figured this one bed is probably exactly the amount of space that I need for the white oak seeds. And so this is what's gonna happen is this is gonna get transitioned to white oak. That's why I'm doing it now. It's good to get a head start on it, but if I didn't have the white oak seeds, that there is other work calling my name. So I probably would wait a few more weeks to start this, but as you can see, with a lot of beds, it's always good to get a head start. So I'm going to get back to it. Okay, so I've got all the trees out of the bed. We're just going to quickly get them tucked in, healed in, so to speak, into pots. You can heal them in with a lot of different materials. I'm going to use finely aged wood chips. These wood chips are over a year old. You can see they're starting to really turn into soil. Uh, you could also heal them in into the ground. You could use loose soil, compost. There's all sorts of ways to do this. I've got videos on it other people do as well and uh <clears throat> what i've done here is i've counted so i've got six of these that are truly massive right just to give you an idea what that bed produced these are two stacks of 18 each of the average sized black walnuts okay and then i haven't counted these yet but i've got you know six nine eleven of these slightly smaller ones these are still a pretty decent size but a little bit smaller and then you know six seven eight about ten or eleven of these really small ones so we're gonna get them all healed in the idea is just i put a little bit of wood chips in the pot i'll kind of hold these with one hand and sprinkle wood chips all around them with the other hand and then i'm gonna label all of these pots very important and i'm gonna stick them inside my deer fence typically deer don't really bother the black walnut on this site i haven't seen deer nibbling any of them but just to be safe we're going to get them inside of this fenced area here, and uh, that's about it. You know, everybody has their own labeling system that makes sense to them. I'll just run you guys real quick through what I do. Black walnut, that's obvious, times 18A. A is just the second largest, you know, the, the highest quality, largest trees I have get an A+. plus. The second down from that is A, and just each size goes down a letter A, B, C. 
C is typically the lowest I go. N1 is the bed that designates it's the northmost row, and it was the first, <clears throat> well, I start with zero, so that's zero, that's N1. This is south zero, S0, S1, so forth and so on, you get the gist. And I have a detailed descriptions in a Google Doc that's you know on the cloud and saved on my computer telling me where these walnuts came from. I believe these came from Akiva Silver, uh, some cultivar quality trees up at Cornell, but I could have that confused with some of the Hershey black walnut that I have off the top of my head, can't quite remember, but that's why N1, it's in the notes. Okay, so I dumped all the soil back in the bed. I added some fresh worm compost and some fresh leaf compost to top off. You know, it was sitting about an inch or two lower than this lip. That's about how full I like them. And now I'm going to take these white oak seeds because these germinate in the fall. Let's see if I can find one with a with a radical. They're a little wet. They just got rained on, but you can see already germinating. So we're going to get these spread out. You know, we don't want the radical to get any longer than that before we plant. Otherwise, it gets very easy to damage the acorn. So we're going to plant those real quick. I'll show you what the spacing looks like. First, I dump them all out, then I'm going to spread them around, and then I'm going to take ones with the longer roots like this and make sure they're facing the right way. If it hasn't sprouted a root yet, it really doesn't matter which way it's laying in the soil. It could be like this, like that, like this. I do like to lay them flat because typically the radical comes out there. It can sense gravity. It knows which way is down, and it'll just go down. Whereas if the nut is like that, it's maybe not 100% ideal, but they figure it out. I don't get too fussy with orientation. You know, I've talked about spacing a lot before in other videos. This is roughly the spacing I like to go where there's a solid inch around each seed, give or take. And so I actually didn't fit all of the acorns in this bed like I thought, so I'll probably have to put the rest maybe in this walnut bed or something like that. But that's kind of the, the workflow this time of year is I gather a ton of seed. I never know exactly how much space I'm going to need for all the seed, and so I'm continually having to free up bed space, build more beds, or distribute more seed in various ways. I could go direct plant them. I could offer them through the nursery if I have excess seeds, so forth and so on. It's getting late in the day, so this will probably have to happen tomorrow. The other thing I wanted to mention is that black walnut will sometimes exhibit a double dormancy. So out of that bed, I pulled out all these walnuts you see floating here. We float tested them. And then there's probably 10 or so that sank. These that sank are likely still viable seeds. So I will put these with the rest of my black walnut seed that I've been collecting over the past few weeks. Right now they're stratifying in buckets. These will get planted out as soon as I have bed space available. And we'll give these a second chance. The ones that float, we will offer as a sacrifice to the woods because they're likely not viable. The float test, as I've mentioned before, not always 100% accurate, but when I have limited bed space, it's good to eliminate the potential duds. Uh, it works typically pretty well for walnuts and acorns. It doesn't work as well for every species. Hazelnut, I don't trust the float test at all, for example, but... But that's a little look at what's going on today in the nursery. Like I said, a milestone for the season for several reasons. I'm going to go over here and reorganize a bunch of these pots and get to some other chores. But it's been a pleasure. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hit me up, please, if you have any questions, comments about any of this. I hope everyone is doing okay. Uh, if you were in the path of that Hurricane Helene, it is truly devastating seeing what's happening to a lot of the Southeast. We were really lucky. Uh, it's been a long day. I can't remember how much I've talked about this, if at all, in this video. The storm really was not bad here at all. Uh, it happened, you know, it's Monday today. It came Friday last week. Uh, it was not bad at all here. Extremely lucky and grateful for that. And, uh, you know, my heart and my thoughts are with you guys if you were affected by that storm. It's uh, truly devastating. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm realizing... I feel like I rushed that a little bit, that last, you know, I felt like I was like, okay, I've said everything I want to say, I'm going to end the video. And then I had that last minute impulse where I was like, I really, I want to make some comments on this storm so that folks know, because this is maybe the first video that I've recorded since the storm happened. Um, it happened last Friday, today's Monday. I've posted videos since then, but I don't think I've recorded anything since then. So just letting folks know, first of all, I'm okay. Uh, the farm is okay. The nursery is okay. We did really good here. The storm was not, uh, it really didn't, it wasn't 
hardly anything in this area that we're at here, southwestern Virginia near Martinsville. But, you know, I've been paying close attention to news and social media, and it's just, I mean, our, our region was hit hard. We locally may have been okay, but southern Appalachia, the southeast, that's our eco-region, that's our communities. People I know have been very, very heavily, extremely affected by this storm, and it's really sad. Um, and if you're able, if you're in a position where you're able to help, I, I highly encourage you to do so in any way that you can, whether it's donations financially or donations of goods. I know there's lots of places in North Carolina where you can kind of, where they're, they're basically aggregating supplies and shipping them out to Asheville and other affected areas, that sort of thing. So if you're able to partake in that, it goes a long way. People are really in need right now. And also just a reminder, you know, all these storms are getting worse and worse with climate change. We need to be, and I'm not saying that the folks were not prepared or that this is their fault, but we need to take this and prepare to whatever extent is possible for more events like this. Nowhere is safe, right? We don't know where the next event like this is going to hit. Hurricanes are not the only event like this that could be devastating. Uh, and so it's just a reminder of the times that we're in. Um, and ultimately there's only so much that you can do. So while I'm saying prepare, I'm also saying don't get too caught up in being anxious and feeling like you've got to prepare for every scenario. You can't be prepared for all of them. Um, anyway, I'm just trying to be present with it all and, um, you know, observe my feelings and pay attention to what's happening to other people. But yeah, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm okay and that, uh, but this region is is suffering. Is, is There's no denying that. Most of you probably know this. Anyway, with that, I am going to end it and get back to cleaning all this up. I got to get the cage on top of this thing and throw some mulch down to cover that seed. And uh, that's it. One other thing. Right here. That, if the camera will focus, well, that's an acorn weevil. You're going to see some of these guys. They can damage the acorns, uh, which can cause mold. It can kill the acorns. Uh, sometimes the seed is still viable, even with the weevils. So that's why I probably could plant this denser. I don't think I'll get 100% germination. It's it's always, you never know what germination is going to be. So spacing can be tricky. That That's the spacing I want. But given that I might not get 100% germination, I might, you know, might not get that spacing. So sometimes I plant denser. It's all, you know, there's a lot of wiggle room with spacing, but just a few thoughts on that real quick since I saw that we will.